I've always been a massive fan of toy lines that have a slightly controversial story behind them. Now combine that with a movie themed toy line and I'm all over making a video about it. So today we're in Sherwood Forest at Nottingham, home to one of history's most famous bandits and the inspiration behind a movie that spawned the most shameless official movie toy line of all time. Kenner's 1991 Robin Hood Prince of Thieves. and 90s, movie themed action figures were all the rage. It didn't matter whether it was a family film or if it were rated R. If they could turn it into an action figure line, they did. Back then, licenses for movie themed action figure franchises were like Uncle Murder songs. Anybody could get it. Coneheads, Dick Tracy, The Mask, Police Academy, Rambo, Terminator, Predator, Jurassic Park, Die Hard. Okay, wait, maybe not Die Hard. I do often think though, how awesome would it have been if Kenner made a die-hard set of action figures with John McClane and Hans Gruber and a whole Nakatomi Plaza playset? It would have been fucking amazing! But yeah, I realise I'm getting incredibly sidetracked and that's not why we're here today. But while I'm mentioning Kenner, it's also important to point out just how impactful they were in the creation of movie-themed action figure toys. Kenner were literally the top boys of movie themed action figures and during the 80s and the 90s if you had a toy that was from a movie, 9 times out of 10 chances are it was made by the Kenner Corporation and they're also the company that made the toys that we're going to talk about in today's episode. So the movie Robin Hood Prince of Thieves was released in 1991, directed by Kevin Reynolds and starring Kevin Costner as the legendary Robin Hood. With a star-studded cast of Alan Rickman, Morgan Freeman, Christian Slater, this was set to be the most grandiose telling of the Robin Hood legend ever, a big Hollywood blockbuster spectacular. And it was the 90s, so obviously they needed an action figure line to run alongside the release of it, and of course Kenner were the company that were chosen to release him. We'll storm the evil sheriff of Nottingham's castle. Azim, launch But little did we know, whilst we were begging our parents to get us this brand new Kenner action figure release, that these toys had a deep dark secret, and a secret that we wouldn't find out until many, many years later. But more on that in a little bit, for now, let's just have a look at the action figures themselves. So first up we've got the particular character Robin Hood, played by Kevin Costner. Coming through with what is a pretty realistic likeness as far as I'm concerned, Kenner were always really good at nailing the likeness of an actor, and as far as this figure goes, I think they knocked it out of the ballpark. I think the same can also be said for the Azim action figure, the Moor, played by the legendary Morgan Freeman, which is interestingly the only ever kids released action figure of Morgan Freeman that's ever existed. Azim is by far the coolest character in the movie in my opinion, coming through with the scimitar blade and if you remove his hood again he's got an awesome likeness to the actor that plays him. Then we've got Friar Tuck and you can't have a Robin Hood toy line without Friar Tuck. This one doesn't look too much like the actor that played him but looking at him it's obvious who it's meant to be. He's got his little Jesus sandals, he's got this weird battle staff that looks more like a shepherd's crook. He's got his little robes on, he's a lot smaller than the other characters and he might not be much use on a battlefield but give him a barrel of altar wine and he will drink anybody under the table. Then we've got Little John. Tear it down for what? Another legendary character from Robin Hood lore. You couldn't make a Robin Hood series without Little John being in it. He rolls sleeveless so you know that he likes to fight and weapon of choice, big fucking stick. He's another toy that doesn't have the perfect likeness to the actor that played him in the movie, but you know exactly who he is. He's got the grizzly beard, he's got the wild man look, he's a perfect little John. And then lastly, making up the fifth and final member of Robin Hood's Merry Men, spoiler alert, Robin Hood's long lost brother, Will Scarlet, played by Christian Slater. Once again, the likeness on this thing isn't perfect, it doesn't look too much like the actor that played him. But I think the key to a good character likeness on a toy is not always having to be exactly the same, but representative enough for us to recognise who that's supposed to be. And again, I think this one nails it. His weapon loadout is a small working crossbow and a quiver full of bolts. And as they all stand together, there's no denying that these five merry men all look ready to defend Sherwood Forest from the Sheriff of Nottingham and his army of killers. Okay, let's check out the bad guys. 
first up, we've got the Sheriff of Nottingham himself. Hold tight, Alan Rickman. Rest in peace. He's got the Cenobite leather. He's got the James Brown cape, the black headband, the flat top haircut. What the fuck? Did they not have the license to make an Alan Rickman likeness face or some shit? How did they get this so wrong? All right, we'll talk about that later. <clears throat> okay, back to it. He's got the broadsword. He's also supposed to have a medallion around his neck for some reason, but the one that I've got doesn't have it. It must have been lost. Maybe he got it jacked. We are in shotting him after all. From Knott's like Friar talk, and I don't give a flying fuck like Oh, man, I'm from Knott's like Tax Man. Old school Nottingham Axe Man. Next up, we've got the Dark Warrior, which is supposed to be kind of like a generic soldier, not any particular person from the movie, so we can't compare the likeness on this one. But this guy looks like he come from fucking Asgard. There's not one person in the Robin Hood movie that rolls round with a winged helmet like that. This guy looks like the War Duke. He'd be more suited to Dungeons and Dragons than Robin Hood. Either way though, he does look undeniably dope. Even if it does look a bit like they made his armour out of a Brillo pad. He's also supposed to have this little dagger that fits in his belt, which I don't have. This thing would have been one of the first things that got lost when the kids ripped these off the cards. It's real small, real easy to lose, so I don't have it. He does, however, have this giant pike scythe. Check that shit. Looks like a fucking executioner's axe. Bad boy. Okay, next up for the bad guys, we've got... Fucking nobody, because that's it. There's only two bad guys in this series. And I know that this Dark Warrior was supposed to be seen as some kind of Stormtrooper or Power Rangers putty or Ninja Turtles foot soldier and you buy loads of them to make up an army, but with such a diverse cast of good guys, you'd think there'd be a bit more range amongst the evildoers, but there isn't. That's literally it. The Sheriff of Nottingham and the Dark Warrior. There's even a different crossbow-wielding version of Robin Hood that you can get, and also two different versions of heads, American and English. For the record, the American one looks nothing like Kevin Costner, almost looking like some kind of Disney prince. Either way, still only two bad guys to go against them. There was also an unreleased series 2 that Kenner never got to make in, which included this awesome Richard the Lionheart figure, which obviously looks nothing like Sean Connery, and a wicked looking Celt Barbarian, which would have added at least one extra bad guy to help level the playing field a bit, but he never got made either. So all we ever got were these two villains in the whole line, which makes it even funnier, because the good guys have also got all this shit. They've got this battle wagon with a rope activated drop down drawbridge and a giant battering ram hidden inside it with removable side plates that slot together to create a defensive barrier. Attached to the roof is a giant boulder flinging catapult that can also be removed and used at ground level. They've got the bowler bomber, another large catapult machine on wheels that can be moved around and fires giant atlas stone sized bolusers. And they've got this net launcher, a gigantic crossbow that looks like something that was built to shoot dragons out of the sky. It fires arrows the size of church spires, with huge fishing nets attached to them that could easily double up as a football goal. All in all, leaving the sheriff of Nottingham and his army of one lone dark warrior incredibly outmanned, ridiculously outgunned, and very much the underdogs in this war. From the day that they were manufactured, these poor little bastards were just destined to be smashed with rocks, captured in nets, have their skulls and rib cages and legs shattered and crushed and battering rammed over and over again by all this crazy primitive artillery. And whoever these dark warriors are, they 100% chose the wrong side when they were deciding who to fight for. The toy commercial for this line also made out that the Sheriff of Nottingham had this big castle playset, but that was never made, never released, never spoken about after that commercial. The good guys even got a whole forest playset with traps and weapons and more dope shit, but again, the bad guys got nothing. Absolute cannon fodder. Now let's be totally honest, there can't be that many kids that were excited for a Robin Hood Prince of Thieves action figure line. They've got to be up there with some of the most random movie toys ever created. But it's only when you start looking into them a bit that it kind of makes sense why these were made. So these toys were released by Kenner. Kenner, what else did Kenner make? Star Wars? Why do I recognise this guy? Why have they all got this big hefty cloth covering up most of their bodies? Let me just have a little... 
Oh, fuck. Oh, no, they didn't. Tell me that you don't recognise this guy. No? Okay, I'll make it a bit easier. Kenna, you son of a bitch! Now, I'll be honest, whatever they did worked, because as a kid, I never noticed this, and I was a super observant little fucker, so they definitely pulled the wool over my eyes. And it's not uncommon for toy companies to reuse the same moulds and the same sculpts. I mean, Mattel did it for the majority of their Masters of the Universe line, but they were always pretty brazen with it. It was obvious that they were the same sculpts. But by Kenner covering them all in these cloth clothes, it's like they didn't want us to find out. It's like they knew they were lying to us. And it's only when you start scrutinising each figure individually that this dark secret that they tried to hide from us becomes more and more exposed. Because it wasn't just Fire Tuck that was a recasted figure, it was every single fucking one of them. And although I'm not going to go into every individual part that they used for each figure, there's so much information online about it. For example, you want to know why Alan Rickman looks so bizarre? Because it's just a Lex Luthor figure with a random Robocop bad guy's head stuck on the top of it. Little John, that's Batman and Hawkman. Robin Hood is Green Arrow. No wonder he's got a random unexplained G emblem on his belt. It's like Kenner were playing fucking remold roulette when they were making these things. And it doesn't just stop with the action figures. The Robin Hood battle wagon? That's a reused Endor Ewok battle wagon with a repurposed Ewok catapult stuck on the top of it. Shit me, the Sherwood Forest playset? It's not even to scale. It's an Ewok Endor playset with green leaves stuck on the top of it. And then it's like the cycle continues, because straight after that, the net launcher is used for the battle trolls. Poison Ivy's got Will Scarlet's crossbow, and Harvey Dent is rocking the Sheriff of Nottingham's medallion around his neck. Now, like I said, it's not unusual for toy companies to do this kind of thing, and reuse parts from figures that they've already made, and if you start deep diving online, you'll end up down a whole rabbit hole bringing up information on this kind of thing. But I just think it's funny, and actually quite cool that they got away with it, and it also explains a bit of why these figures even exist. Because yeah, they did sculpt some stuff for them, but let's be honest, half of the work was already done for them. These were a pure kit bash of different Kenner parts. They might as well have been made by the Super Suckload. They got a load of parts from previous Kenner toys, stuck them together, repainted them, repackaged them as Robin Hood toys, put them on shop shelves and hoped that nobody had questioned it. Now I know when you think about this movie, Robin Hood Prince of Thieves, it's not one that instantly comes to mind as a 90s classic. Not for most people anyway, but when you actually look back at the film, it's pretty fucking awesome. It's got a cast of incredible actors, huge scope, awesome battle scenes, it doesn't rely on a ton of CGI, it's got real life big sets, dope characters, wicked action and awesome bow and arrow camera work. It's a great retelling of the Robin Hood story but doesn't take itself too seriously. It's got horror vibes, it's got jokes, it's got everything that you'd want to see from a dope Hollywood blockbuster action movie. So with all that taken into account, it makes a ton of sense that Kenner thought that this would be a dope IP for some action figures. So another really funny thing about this film is that Kevin Costner speaks with an American accent throughout the entire movie and it never explains why. This is before Google where you could just go and check and we're watching this film confused wondering why is this guy playing British Robin of Loxley yet speaking in an American accent and the reason is is that he struggled so much doing the British accent that halfway through the picture they decided to just drop it and just go with the American accent and never explain why. It's really weird and watching the film back I think it's one of the reasons why it's not received so well but in a way it just makes me like the movie even more. And let's be honest, when we were kids playing with our toys, we all used to use American accents anyway. So when we were recreating scenes from Robin Hood Prince of Thieves, you do not know that our Robin Hood sounded like an American, regardless of what Kevin Costner sounded like in that movie. It seems I invaded past the gate again, John Little. Or should I call you Little John? I'll cut your fucking heart out with a fucking spoon. There was a rich man from North. No man controls my destiny. Why do you fucking hate me so much, Will? I... I just can't say. Especially one who attacks downwind and smells of garlic. Bloody hell, Friar. What the hell happened to you? <laughs> My name is Robin, Robin Hood of Loxley, England. Now I've got to admit that until recently, these are not even a line of toys that I was that bothered about owning. I picked them up in a lot of retro toys, the same person that I got the Ninja Turtles skates from. 
And always been a fan of things that are a bit fucked up and shameless, I appreciated the kit bashing and the reusing of all the other Kenner parts, and the overall story that wraps around them made them even more awesome to me. And on top of all that, they also reminded me of how much love I've got for the movie. Also, since I started this video, I've collected some of the little parts that were missing off the figures, so I need to say a massive shout to all the Slimehouse viewers that sent me spare parts to complete my line. I now have a medallion for the neck of my Sheriff of Nottingham. You might have also noticed that the Robin Hood that I've been using in this video, his bow strap is just a piece of cotton. He's originally supposed to have a white piece of rubber that allows arrows to fire from his bow. Just another reason not to be on the Sheriff of Nottingham's team. And I could have held out until I got the proper strap for the bow before filming it, but I also didn't mind using that version with the cotton bow string. I like that that kid must have snapped the rubber strap that it came with and been so upset that his mum or his dad got some cotton and made him a new one for it. It's these little things that make up that toy's individual history. And I know at the start of this video I was taking the piss and saying kids must have been begging for their parents to get them this new Kenner release. But for the kids that did want them, they must have had hours of fun playing with them. And that little repaired string on that bow is just a testament to how much they meant to these kids that did love them. Because sometimes the toy that you didn't think that much of as a kid will have been another kid's most favourite thing in the whole world. Not every toy has to be a classic. In fact, it's the toys that get the least love and are the least talked about that I quite often enjoy collecting the most, and these figures are a perfect example of that. They came out to serve a purpose, to promote a new movie, make some money, and give kids a fun toy line to play with. And they might not go down in history as some of the most iconic toys of all time, and many of us that had them only owned them because they were quickly reduced to cheap discount rack toys. These were the kind of toys your friends bought you as a present when you had a birthday party because their parents didn't want to spend any more than a fiver. But in their own little way, they're a great example of creativity, kit bashing, reusing and repurposing. And above all else, there's something to be said about a toy company that steals parts from their own figures to make new ones, that then ended up in the hands of a bunch of poor kids that found them in discount bins, that feels perfectly fitting for a line of Robin Hood toys. If you enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to give it a like, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. I'm also on Instagram at Theo underscore Kane underscore Slimehouse, and if you want to help make this channel grow, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash Slimehouse TV, and for as little as a dollar a month, you can become a slime renegade and help make this channel and all figured out and these videos bigger, better, more impressive and more regular than ever. In the meantime, I'm Theo Kane, this is Slimehouse TV, and I'll catch you in the next video. Until then, I